Live sports has been a lucrative investment over the past decade, but one that's mostly been reserved for the super rich that can shell out billions of dollars for sports teams and franchises. Now that may be changing as UFC and WWE combine to create a professional sports powerhouse with rights negotiations on the horizon and a way for retail investors to get in on the action. This is Tech Check Weekly. This week, we dig deeper into the Endeavor UFC WWE live combat wrestling deal. Despite the decline of linear TV, the move to on-demand streaming content, and rise of video games and social media, all fighting for eyeballs and minutes spent, sports are one of the few live events that can reliably demand an audience. As such, sports rights contracts, they have only climbed in value. And there's a few new kids on the block. Ari Emanuel, the hard-charging, empire-building agent who built his agency into a publicly traded media conglomerate partnering with Vince McMahon of the WWE. We paid a fair price, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we paid a little bit for control premium. We think we can extract from the business right now and grow the business with all of our levers. The deal brings together UFC, which Endeavor bought back in 2016, together with the WWE to create a combat-centric live events powerhouse. It is an all-stock deal with UFC commanding 51% of the new company, but looking at the share breakdown, the merger values WWE at $9.3 billion and the UFC at $12.1 billion. The deal values UFC, you mentioned some numbers, $12 billion and WWE at $9.3 billion. That's a big number. What the WWE's know? market cap is six and a half. Here's what I would say to you. Exactly why we did this, because I think we weren't getting the pure value. I don't think the WWE was no, getting we the pure value. Combined, it's, uh, it's rarefied air. But one analyst at Wells Fargo calculates UFC's value significantly lower at $9.4 billion. So how do you get to $12 billion plus? Well, this chart says a lot. That blank space for UFC is the key variable, and that will determine what the market is willing to pay for the new company when it goes public. The chart on your screen represents the average annual contract increases for major sports. The NFL TV rights contract, which begins in 2024, it saw a bump of 73% from the previous one. NBA TV rights signed in 2017 nearly tripled, while NHL rights, they, they more than tripled. TV rights contracts have been one of the most lucrative investments of the last decade plus. In 2010, total annual TV rights for sports and major conferences was at about $6.3 billion. This year, it's expected to be around $17 billion. That's a return of 170%. Pretty good, but do consider that if you held the S&P during that time, you'd be up more than 250%. Looking forward though, there's the big tech factor that could keep the money rolling in. Amazon, Google, Apple, they are the new entrants and they are paying up. Google, $2 billion a year for the NFL Sunday ticket package, roughly $500 million more than what DirecTV currently pays. And then there's Apple, agreeing to more than double Major League Soccer's annual rights payments with a 10-year, $12.5 billion deal for the global rights to 1,000 games. Benedict Evans, a venture capitalist and analyst, he recently wrote, Companies are using TV as an incremental benefit that comes with no marginal cost to increase the perceived value of something much more strategic to them. Device repurchase for Apple and Prime for Amazon. Sports has a unique status as a streaming asset because you can't make more of it, but that pushes the price up. The big question for Ari Emanuel now and for the new UFC WWE entity that he will be the CEO of is can they leverage their combined scale in live sports and entertainment? This valuation basically rests on the upcoming rights expirations for both WWE and UFC, but Ari Emanuel and Vince McMahon, they may need nothing less than a TKO to win over Wall Street.